This is going to be a quick introduction to, to using styles in Nisus Writer. And I'll starting right now with a, uh, a text document that already has plenty of text in it. I'm not going to force anybody to watch me write a lot of text. And we'll start by opening the tools drawer and uh, start working on some styling within this document. We'll start with the title line, Enjoying Wet Winter Extremes. And since that is a title, we'd like that to stand out a little more. So we'll switch over to the text tools. I'm going to make this a 20 point font. Um, so make it a little larger, make it bold so it'll stand out a little bit more. And I'd also like this to stand out away from the text below it. So I'm going to add some spacing afterwards, oh, about 16 points. So you can see that's about 16 points now. And that's the characteristics of this line of text. To be sure that I can use this same styling in, the in a new line of text at some point, what I will do is use the context menus and right click or control click, go to paragraph style, and define a new paragraph style based on this selection. So if I click that, you'll notice we've moved from the text view over to the styles view. We'll open this up a little bit so I can see. I'm going to rename this style from normal one to heading one, or header one. Note here that I'm using the style name as header, and that's distinctly different from a page header, which is more commonly used in word processing. And this is a sample of what that text will look like based on that style. So it's bold, it's 16 point, it's got some spacing between paragraphs. It's based on normal. The next style is going to be normal one, which I don't really care about. I would like it to be normal. Uh, after I write a, a header, the next thing I probably want to do is sort writing plain text, and that's what this will let, allow me to do. So now we've created this header one style. I'm going to go back over to our text, the document we're working on, and we're going to switch from this text format to the style sheets. And you see there's a header one defined, but you also see that when I select this text, it's still defined as normal. So we're going to change that by clicking on header one and make this a header one. And now the text after that is normal. As we scroll through the text, we can see there's some single lines with a few words that are essentially subtitles or subheaders. And I'd like these to stand out as well, so I'm going to go back to the text tool make them bold. Uh, instead of 20 points, I'm going to make them about 16 points. I also want to have some spacing underneath these. So I'm going to push this to about, well, let's try well, 16 points after that. And we're going to space before that as well about 8 points. So there's some space around this subheader we're looking at. Again, we're going to right click, go to paragraph style, a new paragraph style based on the selection. We pop over to the style sheet. We're going to call it header one or header two. So header two has these characteristics we've just defined. We want its next style to be normal. And we want it to be based on header one this time instead of the normal style. And that'll become apparent in a few minutes when we start modifying styles. So now I'm going to step back over. And as you can see, when we go to the styles list, this still is defined as a normal style or having the normal style. But we know it's not. We've modified it. We want to make this the header 2. Scrolling on through the text, we'll see that I've got several other subsections. And now I don't have to go through this detail of redefining the text style. I can say I want to make that header 2. I find another line, I want to make that a header 2. And you see this takes on the characteristics of the header 2 style. And we're back at header 2. So now we've got some major subsections within this document along with some plain text. And we've got a title, it's a header 1. 
And if we look at this text, then these paragraphs, they are defined as normal. And as I look at this, I think, well, it's a little dense. I'd like to space this out a little bit. In addition, I've got a situation where there's two carriage returns. There's a carriage return after the paragraph and another carriage return that inserts a blank line between paragraphs. To simplify that a little bit, so as we write considerably more in the future and start enhancing this document, I would like to make some spacing after the paragraphs. I'm going to push this up to about a 12-point space. And I also think that this paragraph is a little dense, and so instead of having a one-line spacing, I'm going to push this to 1.2-line spacing. And as you can see, it's a little bit easier to read. Your eye can follow the line a little easier. So all, the, all paragraphs now have this normal style, except this first one, which we've just modified. So to modify all the paragraphs that have that style, we'll click on this little gear, go down to Redefine Style from Selection, and click on that. And now, as you'll see, every paragraph takes on that same styling. So it's got the extra spacing, it's got spacing after the paragraph, and here we can see that there is a uniform set of attributes for all this text. Now let's do one final illustration as to why we had the header 2 based on header 1. First, what I'd like to do is select header 1. And I've decided that instead of having it black, I want to have this stand out a little bit with some color, and I'm going to make it blue. So I can change the header 1 to blue. As you see, the header 2s are still black. All the text is black. But since I've changed this to blue, and I want the style overall to be blue, we know we can change the style by redefining it from a particular selection. We've changed the header 1 to blue. We're going to redefine that style from the selection. And when I do that, notice that the header 2s also change to blue. And that is why you may want to have subheaders based on prior headers. So if I were to define a header 3, I would probably define that header 3 as based on header 2, which means if I went in and changed header 2 to be italicized, header 3 and the following headers, since they're based on header 2, would become italicized as well. It's worth noting here that style sheets are specific to a single document. If you want to share styles between documents, you should check out the style library in the user's guide. So that is a brief introduction to how styles work with Nicest Writer. I strongly recommend to use the help and go to the Nicest Writer Pro Help option. I use command question mark. That will open up the Nicest Writer user guide, which is a very um, comprehensive document, to say the least. And the section that we've barely touched on is in formatting documents and creating documents and looking at the formatting documents using style sheets. So I recommend digging into that document to look at it a little more as what you can do with style sheets and styles. There is a lot. It's an amazingly powerful tool and we barely scratched the surface, but you should be able to get a sense of how it can save you a lot of time by using styles.